everyone it is mary as i start to chat along if someone can tell me if you can see and hear me okay that would be super helpful i'm so excited to spend a little bit of time with you this afternoon um i picked a really fun project if you're crafting along with me uh if you're doing the same thing if not i'm happy you're here and just hanging out this doesn't really matter what you're doing <laughs> i know time is precious and so the fact that you're here makes me excited. So I see everybody popping in. If you can hear and see me, let me know. Let's see. All right. Um, while we're waiting for that to pop in, if you're watching the replay later on, you could probably skip ahead to about two minutes in. This first two minutes will probably just be jibber jabber, saying hi, all that good stuff. Um, we got people coming in from Brown County, Indiana. Alberta, Canada. Yay! Wanda and Carla. Uh, Campbell River on Vancouver Island, Maryland. Yay! Uh, the Villages, Florida. Someone's from Frederick County. Is that Frederick, Maryland? Hi! 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 Susan, Debbie, Patty, everyone. Okay, so it, I didn't see yet in the comments that you can hear and see me okay. Can we get someone to just say yes? I see if I can call it. This was class. I would call on Susan. <laughs> Susan, can you hear me and see me? Hi from Wyoming. Hello. So again, if you, okay, thank you, Susan. If you, um, if you are tuning in for the replay, you can probably skip ahead. Uh, probably a good two minutes will be good. Yeah. So how's everybody doing? It's really, really sunny out right now in Maryland, but it is cold. It's cold for my liking. And okay, lots of, oh, another Marylander, Gladys. Okay, cool. So um, who's just hanging out and who's crafting? Anybody, did you do any crafting this weekend? I uh, did some schoolwork. I did, uh, yesterday I watched movies and tried to relax. I tried to rest yesterday, <laughs> for sure. Um, but sometimes my energy gets the better of me and I uh, get excited to do other things. I am supposed to be going to Ikea today, though. Um, my husband is literally waiting for me. <laughs> I said, don't rush me. I have a live to do, and who knows how long this will take. I said, probably about an hour. Um, Lynn says, let's stamp. Yes, well, we're going to do a little stamping, a lot of dye. I was going to say a lot of dyeing. <laughs> we don't want to do that. A lot of dye fun with dyes. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So I know I love Ikea too. I know, I know, but Patty, I lived places not near an Ikea my whole life. So to be 25 minutes from one, oh, it's just so fun. I do think they need to have like places to put a coffee cup though in the carts because, you know, you go there to really peruse, right? I mean, like, it's not like an in and out quick trip like Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, let's, oh good, Susan's doing some practice stamping and working with alcohol markers while watching. Yay, very good. I know, coloring just takes practice. That's the one thing I taught in my alcohol marker class was you just got to do it, right? All right, I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to go, I'm fancy now, folks. Look, let me show you. Oh wait, there we go. Look, I'm still here. And I don't take up that much space. So that's exciting. If you've been hanging out with me on lives or classes, you know, I have to like split the screen. And so anyway, I figured it out. Okay. Um, on the topic of classes, before we get started in the description box, you're going to see a, in the description box of this live, you'll see a registration link. If you would like to join us for the next live class, which is going to be embossing folders. We're going to be doing some traditional, some outside of the box uh, work with them and just a lot of fun. Honestly, I haven't played with embossing folders in years. And so I love these 3D ones that they've come out with. I know you want to see a sneak peek of what we're going to make. Let me show you. Hold on. Oh, and it's as far as the details go, 17 February at 12 o'clock PM Eastern time. Um, virtual live. Yes, there will be a replay and pay whatever you like. Okay. So this is one of the cards. Are you ready? This is one of the cards we're going to be making on this one. Oh, it's just magic. It's going to be so fun. So yes. Yeah, so, so we are going to have a good time. Um, if you would like to join, 
you can click that link in the description box. First timers, hey, lots of first timers. Very cool, welcome. Okay, so this is what, I'll just kind of jump in. Let me just tell you, if you do have a question for me, put it in caps because then it'll help me uh, see it quicker. If I don't answer it, just uh, resubmit <laughs> and I will uh, get to it. Or someone yell at me, just yell Mary and I'll pay attention. Okay, so let's jump into what we're going to be making today. I picked a really simple project just to kind of, you know, if you're in a crafty funk or you just, you know, you just want to get back into it or whatever, this is super simple and you could make this same card with multiple different cover plate dies or dies in general, right? So that's why I chose it. But this is what we're going to be replicating today, this card. Um, we're using a cover plate die. We're going to be doing some heat embossing on vellum. Um, got our sentiment here, some embellishments, but I'm going to show you a little technique with your enamel dots. So I'm using specifically pops of color in the gold glitter. And uh, so that would be really fun to show you that technique. Okay. This is an alternate card that I did uh, using a black background and I popped up the remaining pieces. So I used the entire card stock. So this was the positive of the die and these pieces are the negative of the die. And so I was able to get two cards from one die. Today, we're only going to be focusing on one card, but that's something that you can do. And then I really love the um, way that I chose to do this sentiment belly band. I actually cut it and then uh, bubble cut it and then cut again. So I kept it as a band, uh, but you can just strictly do just the sentiment too. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be working on today. All right. Yay. Kim's registered for class. All right. Thank you. I'm excited about it too. It'll be fun. So I'm going to be using, um, this is like the main event. So grab a cover plate if you have one. And this one is the wavy sun die from scrapbook.com. And I also have for my accent pieces, the delicate leaves set. If you didn't see it on my YouTube channel, myself and Juliana Michaels just did a collab using the delicate leaves dies where we made came up with six different cards three for me three from her check it out uh super fun stretch your stash kind of thing i have the sentiment i'm going to be using is from happy b day or happy birthday from scrapbook.com sbc for short if you hear me say sbc that means scrapbook.com so i'm going to be using a sentiment from there but look at this one this is great and i need more birthday uh cards and this one gives you a plethora of birthday sentiments. So I like that one. Going to be using some pops of color for our embellishments. This is the, should be champagne. Yep. Champagne color. And then I have these three uh, distress oxide colors. So I have spice marmalade, wild honey, and mustard seed. Um, so I'm going to be using those and some watercolor cardstock. Lastly, a piece of vellum. Now I can't rave enough about this vellum. This vellum is incredible. This is, uh, I got it off Amazon. It's linked in the description. It's a great price for as much as you get. And it heat embosses great. It's thick. It's just awesome. So we're going to use that as well. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to pull out some sort of a, a craft mat that is going to allow you to do some ink smushing. All right. So if this is, you're new to this, ink smushing is where we put ink down onto our mat and then we wet it and we get a beautiful background. And that is what our background here is. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so I am using, I'm, I'll get this question, but I'm using the replacement mat from the uh, glass multimedia mat by Tim Holtz. This is the mat that sits on top of the glass media mat. You can buy them individually, and that's what I'm using, but it makes my camera do wonky things. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I know that's probably counterproductive, but if it's too close, it makes it like zoom in weird. All right, Jerry, welcome. First time watcher as well. Okay, so I'm going to first put down my spiced marmalade. And all you're going to do is you're just smushing it on your surface here. Any non-porous surface will work. If you're in a money bind and you don't want to spend a lot of money um, or you're just cheap like me, <laughs> you can get the cutting boards, the two-pack cutting board from the Dollar Tree. And that will um, suffice. That'll work great. And that's... 125 divided by two, you get two mats. All right, I'm going to take my water and I'm just going to spritz it. Now, that you can do this two ways. You can do it wet on dry cardstock or you can do it wet on wet. I'm going to do both so you can see the difference, all right? So I'm going to spritz this first, 
then I'm going to spritz my cardstock. That's wet on wet. And then I'm just going to place it down. You're going to get a little bit more of some smooth blending. Do you see how this is bubbling up on my surface? That's a good thing. I love that. I think that allows you to maneuver your colors a lot and kind of smush and you don't get harsh lines. So this is coming out very yellow. So we're going to need probably a little bit more of that uh, spice marmalade solo, right? Because it's coming out very yellow, but that's okay. So now I'm going to do the wet on dry. And I want to show you what that looks like. You're going to see it's going to give you, there's a little less ink there, but it's not going to be as smooth, which is fine. It's just a little bit more of a splatter look. All right. So I just wanted to show that. But we're going to focus on this panel right here. All right. I'm going to wipe this up. And if you are playing along um, with ink smushing, I know you're having a good time because <laughs> this stuff is just so fun. So it's the great thing about this is you're never going to get the same color. You know, you're never going to get the same look. In fact, um, keep that in mind because even though I'm trying to recreate a card, again, it's not going to be the same. So you have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to put on my heat tool and I, it shouldn't affect my microphone at all. You should be able to still hear me. Let me know if that's not the case. I'm using my heat tool here. This is the one from Ranger, just looks like a small hair dryer. That's because it's gonna give me a little bit more of a not as hot concentrated, um, but either one, either heat tool will work. This will just help you speed it up. Now by doing this, what I'm gonna do next is get a splatter, a more of a splatter, less of a blend look. So I'm gonna go back in with the spice marmalade because I want a whole lot more of an orangey look than what I'm getting, even though a wavy sun dye is brilliant with this color. I mean, this is super bright, right? But I'm looking for a little bit more of that you know, brownish orange, I suppose. So let's try that. I'm going to spritz that. And now we can see me getting a lot more of that. I'm trying to fill in the white spots because this dye covers the whole sheet. So that's good. I'm going to try that. We're getting already, we can see we're getting a little bit more of the uh, darker colors. When this spice marmalade mixes, it almost gives it like a burnt orange color. So I'm looking for that. That's kind of the color palette I'm going for. Now that I'm looking at my old card, you know, silly me didn't write down my exact colors, but I'm thinking I didn't use any yellow in that one. So this will be fun. This will be like a whole new, a whole new look. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna get more of this spiced marmalade on there. Okay, and I'm gonna look for, now I wanna fill in this area and I'm gonna look for splatters on this side, okay? Now, this is a great example. See these splatters that I got here up there? It's like a dry look. That is the wet on dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz this a little bit and let's watch that move around, see that? So that's gonna already change some of that look, okay? So just keep that in mind. You can have so much fun with these, just try all different things on it. I'm just really trying to fill in the white spots here without wasting any ink. <laughs> that's my MO. All right. Hi, Vicki, you're not too late. We're just ink smushing. You're not too late. Okay. So this is where we're at right now. I'm liking it. It's still not dramatic enough. So I am going to pull out, let's see what, carved pumpkin. And I'm actually going to pull out a little bit of rusty hinge. I think that was the color I used, quite honestly. It's really like a burnt orange kind of look. So I'm going to try that. It's so funny when you watch these videos on YouTube, how fast <laughs> they go because we cut out all the extra stuff. Because I'm like, man, ink smushing takes a minute. So I'm just going to jump right to the rusty hinge. I think that's really the burnt orangey look I was going for anyway. So let's just see what we get. I'm just going to spritz it a tiny bit on there. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Yes. And I'm getting a little inky on my fingers, but that's okay. All right. Now, now do we see what we're doing here? So this is good. This is what I'm looking for. I'm so glad that we have normalized play like in this craft, you know, we just like, we're supposed to just get in here and just play. That's what we're supposed to do. 
and have fun. It's very therapeutic. It's very relaxing. Thanks, Susan. So far, so good, right? Okay, so this is the other one. I'm just kind of keeping off to the side to pick up excess ink. And of course, I'm going to use it for other projects. All right, so we have that. I am going to try this one. If you see me use one of these mats, you can get them for like the kitchen. I use those underneath to heat set because sometimes my uh, cutting mat will get warped if I don't, and it's just a pain in the butt. So I thought I had my glass mat back in business um, for crafting for videos. The lighting is not the problem now. It's almost like giving me this awful glare and it doesn't look as clean on the video. So I think I'm back to my black and white mat, unfortunately for video. So if you're ever wondering why, okay, will your fingerprints show on the card? Gladys, no, my fingerprints, I'm sure if like the police came, and like dusted it. Yeah, they find my fingerprints, but no, they won't show. They'll be, they'll be fine. They, um, I, when you're ink blending, that's something you have to be aware of to not put your fingers in there because you're going to get real clear prints. Um, okay. So this is what we're at right now. I love it. I'm thinking it's great. So I'm going to keep with this. I am going to heat it just a little bit more because when you're die cutting, you, know, you just want to make sure I like to make sure it's dry before I die cut. I don't know why. I just do. Uh, while I'm waiting, Darla asked what mat I was using. Uh, Darla, that was the replacement mat for the glass, the Tim Holtz glass media mat. <laughs> okay. So we're good there. If I missed any questions, throw them back in. Gladys, thanks for putting that in all caps. I was able to see that real, real fast. All right. So we're good. I'm happy with this background now. Um, super simple. And we're gonna do some die cutting next. We're gonna pull out the uh, cover plate you're using. I'm using the wavy dies from scrapbook.com. And I'm gonna pull out my spell binders. This is the Platinum Six machine. All right, and I'm just going, oh, I should, just in case you're curious, this is the mat I, the sandwich I always use. Base plate. I have plate B. I always use my shim in there. I use my magic mat from SBC. That's so that I don't have to keep replacing these. And then one um, of these, um, what is it called? Cutting plate. So I'm going to put this down now because I have a little bit of warping in my cardstock and I want to get this entire A2 size. I'm actually going to just reinforce it with a little bit of uh, tape. Okay. So I'm going to line it up because it's like exactly an A2 size. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to take just some mint tape, whatever tape you got. Um, you're not going to rip. If you rip anything on the back, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to wrap this up. Okay. Now I'm going to put this into my die cutting machine. Okay. I like to put mine in the die cutting machine at a little angle so that when the rollers come over it, it's almost coming over it like this instead of that big bump. Right. So I like to do that if I, if there's space, which there is because it's only an A2 size. Shirlene, I'm using um, this watercolor, uh, excuse me, the water spray bottle. It's just one from Amazon I picked up. I really like it. You can get really long mists or like droplets, depending on how you use it. And I can add that to, if you can't find it on Amazon, I can add it to the links. All right, so I have my piece right here cut out beautifully. Hello, everyone joining us. Hello, hello, hello. Now, the couple things you can do, if you're gonna use these uh, other pieces that fall out, you can probably flip this like kind of together. So you can probably flip this over and just adhere those pieces and put it down onto a card panel um, if you wanted to do that. But I don't wanna take that kind of time today, so I'm just gonna pop these out and we'll puzzle them back in later. You see how my cardstock got cut? It doesn't matter, you're not gonna... Of the card, so it doesn't matter. That's why we did it that way. Oh, thank you, Monica. Yeah, don't forget thumbs up if you like the video. See, I don't like to coerce people into thumbs up if they don't like the video. If you don't like it, do not. 
feel pressured by me to thumbs up. But if you're having fun, a thumbs up does tell YouTube people might like my video. Uh, a little goal that I have that I'll share here in this small group is I would love to get to 100,000 subscribers um, by the end of the year. <laughs> is it lofty? It's a little lofty. But um, it would be super fun. More crafty friends and helps my business grow and all that. So we'll just put out good vibes. Okay, so here we have our die. Isn't that so cool? Oh, that's so fun. I'm really liking it. Look at the difference in the colors. And quite honestly, I'm pretty sure I didn't use yellow on this original one. This is why it's important to write down your colors, Mary. So I love it. I think it's great. I think it's super fun. So we're going to go with that. Now I do need another piece of cardstock for my, um, my panel. Now you can go straight to your, your card base at this point, or you can just put it on a card panel and add it to your base later. So either one is fine. I'm going to just um, use a card panel. Now I want to make sure when I look, when I line this up, you know, what I've been noticing is someone made a comment on one of my recent videos that I did for the paper trimmers that some of the eight and a half by 11 is not cut exactly perfect. And that could not be more true. And I've been noticing that I'm having to trim up a lot of things lately, which is fine. This is what I wanted to recommend for if you're using a cover plate like this, line it up in one corner area as best you can. This way you only have to trim off um, a little bit. Okay. Um, Charlene. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes, Charlene, I can. Can you send me an email at mary at marypolancodesigns.com? Or you can just go through my website um, and I'll make sure I get you whatever you need. Okay. We're going to just put this down, right? That's how simple this is. So I'm going to do that. And then, yeah, then we'll do the uh, delicate leaves. Now, I love this on this stark background because I find it um, just really kind of adds to the, the clean and simple, even though it's not clean and simple, right? Um, but it's, it kind of does. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I guess more elegant than clean and simple. So I'm using the new glue press. Uh, if you have any questions about the glue press, pop them in the in the chat because I know this is an opportunity for us to kind of talk about some of these products that come out. Um, I have two that I'm giving away at the up the upcoming class, the embossing class, uh, embossing folder class. So if you want a chance to win, join us because I have two to give away. I do like it. Uh, bottom line, I think it's I think it's great. I'm not always excited about the cost of things. <laughs> I think that goes without saying, but. Um, I do think that it's a quality product. I'm going to add my favorite glue, Barely Art Glue, to it next. Right now I'm using Nuvo because it came with it. Uh, and then I'll have more to say about it, I'm sure. So I'm just going to hold this down for a second. Yeah. Hi, Tiffany's here. Yay. Everyone's here. So um, Monica, yeah, I hope it's a good prize, right? And then I also have a couple other things, so Some a couple people can choose between a stamp wheel and misty. We have some good prizes. I like to, um, you know, do that. That's probably my favorite part <laughs> about the classes. Okay. So I have that down. Now you can see right here, I need to trim away some of this, right? So, um, Wanda asks if I have problems with the glue press as it gets down to half. I thought I was at half because it was giving me some problems, but here's what I found out to be the issue. Um, I was storing it in its holster like days on end. And I think that's not meant to do days on end. I think I stored it in there for like one day. It was fine. I think after three days, it was kind of cloggy and it wasn't half full. It was clogged. And so I'll let you know when I get down to half. I don't know. Some people have been saying so. Um, but so far, I haven't had to answer that. Like, I can't answer that question. All right. Um, and scrapbooks.com just restocked it, too. So if you click any one of those links down below, it'll take you to the site. So I'm just going to trim, I'm going to trim a little bit more off. Okay, there we go. And a little bit off. Nope, top is perfect. All right, and I, I can trim that kind of thinness with these, with that Tim Holtz trimmer, in case you were curious. Um, it's one thing I didn't show in the video. You know, those comparison videos are so difficult. It's not, it's so hard to get every single aspect. All right, I'm not going to put the cap back on. I'm just going to keep that here. Okay, where are we at? 
Yeah, Wanda, it's good. It's good to wait for that answer. So if anyone else in the chat knows, please help us out if you've had any issues with it uh, after it goes halfway. All right, so we have this done. Now, if we look at our demo card, we're going to be doing um, some die cutting with the delicate leaves and heat embossing those. So let's just jump into that. I think that's fun. We have our piece of vellum. Now, I want to use this vellum for the belly band as well as the uh, leaves. So what I'm going to do is sort of chop off a piece to keep for my um, my belly band. So that's what we're going to do next. And I would say, let me just get a gauge here of what size. I like that sentiment, that font. So I'm going to say about there. I'm eyeballing, folks. It's about there. Okay. All right, that's about one and a quarter inches. That's going to be for my sentiment. Let me just make sure. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so that's my sentiment, putting that aside. The rest is going to be used for um, my delicate leaves. Question, do you have to use that brand of glue with the glue press? No, that gives you an extra spare bottle for your glue um, that you want. And I've heard good reviews back about the uh, Barely Art and the glitter glue, art glitter glue. Um, so again, chime up, chime in in the chat if you if you know. <laughs> Thanks, Tiffany. That's kind. You're the same. I'm the same with you. I was just in your class. And um, I want to hear what you have to say about the SBC mixed media, like truly, because the, the paper, because I, I truly am like, oh, this is great. But I don't have the professional eye for the mixed media. So I need you to tell me it's good. Okay. See, and when we don't know, we phone a friend. That's the important thing about making sure we stay honest. All right, let's see if I can fit that. I love this die. It's I used a I made a holiday card with it, like as a Christmas tree one time. Maybe I'm gonna need more vellum, folks. This looks like a tiny piece. It's only gonna give me two. I'm gonna need another piece of vellum. I lied to you. That wasn't enough. I will use the rest of that for a um, another sentiment for another day. That's what we're gonna do. Yes, Tiffany, it's gonna be there tomorrow, cool. All right, so again, you've probably heard me rave about this vellum, loving it. I think it's so great, great price, good quality. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm just using it for so many different things. So I'm gonna use three pieces, that looks good to me. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I don't shift them off the vellum when I do this. So as I run through. I always find that my desk becomes way too small when I do these lumps. <laughs> They're too small. I need more space. Then I would just fill up that space, let's be honest. All right. So this right here, and my cutting mat is getting very loved. Can you see that? You can unwarp it too just by putting a little heat on it. I'll do that another time. Nobody wants to see that business. And we have our vellum. Just, you know, as you pull it out, it's not delicate vellum, but you just want to be careful. You're not ripping it. So I have that piece. Have that one. All right, so I have these beautiful three. Now this has been like, you're probably like getting tired of this on my channel because I've been doing it so much. When I find something I love to do though, I just am drawn to it. Now I used this as a stencil in the recent video I did with Juliana. So that's another thing. You don't have to throw away your stuff all the time. Yes, yes, Tiffany agrees. Yeah, about the vellum. All right, cool. So um, let's get into some embossing. Now I like to keep my embossing powders that I use frequently in these big containers. I don't like containers that just have the lid. I like that this locks because, you know, accidents, right? So I'm gonna use the gold again. This is the Princess Gold, um, I believe. Hold on, got hair all over me, I'm shedding. Okay, what do I need? I can use, you can use a dabber, distress ink. If you're new to crafting, this is an important step. Embossing ink is sticky clear ink. You can use it for watermarks. You can use it for heat embossing. It's the same material or same product in both of these. This just comes in a dabber form. 
and distress is the brand. That doesn't mean you can't find other brands with embossing ink. I got that question recently. I have been getting a lot of great questions from brand new card makers. So I'm inclined to do a new card maker series um, or a class. So I will let you know about that um, in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use my ink pad for this one. So either one that you can use is fine. Is someone knocking on my door? Oh, he's knocking on his sister's door. Okay, and I'm just getting the edges here. And it's okay if you cover too much of your um, leaf because you can always brush it away. So that's no issue. All right, and then I'm just gonna dip it into, again, another reason why I like to keep my stuff in a container, because if this was in its bottle, I couldn't do this simple little thing, right? So that's another thing. Now, I don't like it fully covered like it is. It's like really covered. So I'm just gonna brush away a little bit to give me sort of that edge look. That's it, and I'm just gonna brush it back into its container. And then do like this so it makes it not so stark. Like stark. So I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna do the next one. What do you store your stamps and dies? Um, well, I would love to hear from other people because I do, like, I think I got a container from the Dollar Tree, maybe, and I keep it in there. I don't have, other than SBC, I don't have that many stamps and dies. I do have die, when I do my updated craft room tour, I'm going to show you how I do my dies. I do it multiple ways, actually. I have, like, two drawers on the side of my desk that slide out. They're, like, um, like big sheets of uh, magnetic sheets, and I keep my most used dies there but I have multiple ways to store my dies. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question very helpfully right now. So I'm gonna do brush this off and get sort of vintagey. Now, as far as I store them, I have the pockets and stuff. I think I have a video about why I like these particular pockets. You can check that out on my channel. And then my third one here, let me know if I missed any questions. I'm just gonna do my third one. And I'm loving the sort of like, I don't know, I guess you can call it vintage kind of look. It's not perfect. They're not totally covered in gold. They're sort of just like a speckle of the look of it, which I, I really like. Okay. All right. So we're going to cover that and I'm going to, I should have been heating up my tool. So give me a few seconds here. tongs to hold down my pieces or hold them so they don't blow all over the place. But I want you to see how fast this stuff heats up. Let me try to hold this. Ready? Sorry, I'm at a bad angle here. And when you're heating it, it actually kind of straightens out the warping too. So that one's already done. Can we do this one? Finished. Finished. Very fast. Okay. So I'm going to show you these up close. Let me just zoom in a sec. All right. So now oh, they're just so delicate and so pretty. I guess that's why they're called delicate leaves. Ah. And then this one right here. There we go. So you get like that really soft, pretty look. Okay. Not going to let that go too far because we have a sentiment that we need to do as well. So let me get that out. And I'm going to opt for this really pretty um, font right up here. All right. And I like, because I want my, my sentiment to be, um, this is not straight. Yes, it's okay. I want my sentiment to be precise. I want it to, you know, not be vintagey looking. So I'm going to pull out. A stamp and positioner to do that. I'm just going to put this now. I know this is my belly band, so I'm going to make sure that I try to center this as much as possible uh, in the center of my vellum. I'm kind of an eyeballer. Um, 
So there's that. Okay, so that's right on the, I'm actually going to lower it right to the bottom of the vellum because I'm going to trim off the top. I want a thin happy birthday sentiment. So let me put that there. Okay, I'm going to pick this up with my positioner and then I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool um, because this is going to help the embossing powder stick only where I want it, which is on the sticky ink. That's the whole goal, right? Let me turn it this way here. And I'm going to use embossing my embossing sticky ink. I like to stamp twice. You do you, but I like to do it too. <laughs> oh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Okay, put this down. And it doesn't move or shift my vellum. So we're good there. So what do y'all think about the new um, format? You can see me and you can see my desk. This is brand new. I got that feedback in a class. You still want to see me, probably still see my goofy facial expressions. Um, and so I'm glad that I figured that out. Nothing that a little Google search can help you with. All right, let's, oh, thank you, Mishi. I appreciate that. She said she's learning, um, sorry, they said they're learning a lot. I don't know if you're she or he. Carla, give me a sec, I'll answer you. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to dip it in there. Okay. You see why I like these containers? It makes my life so easy. And especially because I use these colors all the time. Now you can see how fast this is because I'll hold it. Done. Okay, so if you'll notice, I left a little bit at the top because I'm going to trim that away. Where do I get my anti-static thingy? So this is an anti-static powder bag. Okay, sneak, sneak peek here behind the scenes. This is an anti-static powder bag I've had for like 10 years. It's still got powder in it, so I keep it. But I just took a, a binder clip so I don't have to hold it with my fingers all the time. But in my can I find easier ways to do things, was on the search for something and this is not what I'm going to recommend but I'm going to show you because it's here in your hair but this right here is one of those powder containers so I was like what if I just had a container with a powder thingy right that I can just pat and pat and move on with my life however this isn't the one I want or recommend because I want the one that has like the screen that the, not all the powder I don't want to dip this whole thing in powder make sense so I am on the hunt. I think I found one. It's in an upcoming video. So I just wasted 30 seconds of your time. Okay, let's move on to this. We're going to cut this down. I have one perfumed powder. Ooh. Oh, you have one of those? Nice. You put perfume powder. That's fun. I never thought of perfumed powder. All right. Let me just line this up here. Now it's vellum so I can see through it, which is brilliant because I can see exactly where I'm cutting. All right, that's good and almost straight. There we go. This is the stuff I get to cut out on the films, <laughs> on my videos. All right, we got it. Okay, so what else is going on? No, it isn't, it doesn't work. What doesn't work? Google search. Okay. Anyone can email me anything at any time. If I, um, my email is mary at marypolancodesigns.com. If someone's at their computer right now and they want to type that out for me, I'd much appreciate it. <laughs> mary at marypolancodesigns.com. All right. So we have this done. Now let's go back over to our sheet. So we have pretty much all our parts done, right? We have, uh, looks, looks like assembly is next. So you can do the embellishment piece uh, one of two ways. You can do it before you assemble everything or you can do it after. Okay, so I'm going to do it after because we're live and I don't want to take up all that time because we could be sitting here watching paint dry. All right, so this is what we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of crease where I want this. All right, um, 
with the vellum. I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm just going to crease it. One thing I wish I had done on the first card that I'm about to do on this card is adhere behind the happy birthday. So if you'll notice here in this one, the happy birthday is kind of coming up. I like that look too, but I want to try it where I actually adhere it. Now that I have my two bends, I know that um, I won't have to do that after I glue it. So I'm going to flip this over and with my precision glue, I'm going to be able to just put some very small dots behind the letters. So it's not totally seeping through. I've actually noticed this vellum's really good about glue. Um, it's not even showing up that much, but even more so when you put it behind the gold, it'll be better. Very, very small amounts. Okay. Now I can come back and I'm just going to hook that because I already know it's lined up. I'm going to hook this one and I'm just going to make sure it's straight. I'm going to put something heavy on this while I check the chat. All right. What we got? Oh, yeah, you can totally make your own. I think it's, did someone say what the powder was? I think I've seen people use cornstarch. Um, what else is there to put in that bag? Um, yes. So if you, I will get, all these recommendations are good. So however you find it is great. If you click any of the links, and I say click the links because it'll bring you right to scrapbook.com. But let's say you click the link of the wavy dye uh, in the description. That'll take you to scrapbook.com. And then in their search, you can put anti-static powder bag or powder bag and it'll pop up and you'll see one. They're all the same in my opinion. I haven't found one that's better than the others. Yeah, baby, I've heard baby powder too. Yeah, absolutely. It's just really an opportunity, something to de-static it or anti-static it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put um, behind uh, just some simple double-sided adhesive just to hold my uh, thing. I probably don't even need to, but I like the, the wraparound look. It's not even something that you, I just like the look. That's the only reason I did it. It's not for functionality. I cut my nails, now I can't lift up double-sided adhesive. Okay, Nancy says don't, she wouldn't use cornstarch, it's clumping. Okay, very good, good to know, very good, okay. So now we have that done. Now I'm going to place, so this is probably another good reason to kind of not adhere it all the way. That's probably a step I would have done different. It's too much to remember. Okay, so I'm going to kind of lay out where I would want my stuff and then we'll go from there. Yeah, because I have all these laid out under it first. Well done. See things you don't think about when you're busy chatting. I already love it. I'm going to put this one because it's got a thin piece right here. I'm going to put that one there. Hmm. Do I even want this one on there? That's the question of the day, folks. That is the question of the day. I don't think so. I think I just like the two situation. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. And then I have an extra piece for me to use later. All right, um, let's see. I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of these. Now, another great thing of heat embossing, I've said this in a previous video, is if you do the heat embossing with the gold under vellum, you can just put your glue under the gold. And there you go. You don't even have to worry about it seeping, showing, its, showing itself through the vellum. Oops, that didn't work. Wish I could show that in slow motion again. All right. If anyone here knows how, and I think someone in my last live told me they were going to email me, and then I forgot to Google it. But if anyone knows how to make live classes have closed captioning, Tiffany, since you do them, do you know? Because I can make my pre my already videos that are posted, you can choose closed captioning, but not the I can't figure out how to do lives. I'm sure it's probably definitely operator error. All right, so I'm just going to place this one down there. All right, I do need to put something on this because it's just not cooperating right now. All right, now let's talk about the fun part of this, I think, is the technique I'm going to show you with your pops of color. A lot of times when we use our glue dots or pops of color, whatever we call them, 
Um, we use them for like the enamel dot accent. So almost like these pearls, we would do it like that. So let's, if I, if I do them like that, I can kind of get nice little dots here, right? Some cute little dots there. Right? Those are good. But one, another thing I like about the consistency and the way they come out is if you do them lightly and you move along almost like a pen, a dot pen, you can get these really subtle, pretty pieces. So I'm going to show you that on this piece of cardstock. Let me zoom in. Okay, Tiffany, you know, I didn't, that's probably why I had a hard time finding it because <laughs> I didn't think we could either. Okay. I'll keep looking though. So right here, I'm going to try to get my hand out of the way, but what you want to do is with this, first of all, get your pressure off your project, figure out what your pressure is outside of your project. So you don't ruin it. All right. So I'm practicing right here and I'm going to press just a very tiny amount. And you just want it to just seep out the center, uh, the edge of the thing. And then you're going to use that same pressure along, right? Same pressure, very, very light pressure. And you can outline sentiments, images, whatever, with that really fun, very light pressure. And it's glitter, because I'm using glitter cards, uh, glitter pops of color, right? So that's what we're gonna do for our sun. And I think it really makes the sun come alive. So I'm going to start doing that. And when I say come alive, I just mean like pretty. <laughs> That's all. I just mean it's pretty. So this is a long, uh, this is a longer process. So I'll probably just use this as an opportunity to chat with you as I do it. Um, if there's any questions, of course, please pop those in. But um, what can I tell So those of you who missed my announcement in the beginning, I'll talk about the next class that I have coming up. The next class I'm going to be doing live is going to be embossing folders. So if you were there for our stencil live class last time, we did a lot of stencils. We did make our own. We did basic techniques and then different ways to use your stencils. So that's what we did in that class. And very similar fashion is going to be the embossing folder class. So I used embossing folders when I first started card making about almost 20 years ago. Haven't used them much. And then they came out with these 3D folders. I was like, what is this business? And so I started playing with them again and I love them. And so I'll give you a sneak peek of a card we're going to make. We're actually going to do the stencil class did not have finished products. We did not finish projects at the end. And I regretted that. So this class coming up, we're going to actually make three different cards and we're going to do them start to finish. I have two hours slotted, but I would block your schedule for three and you can find the link to join that class to register in the description box of this video. So you can just go right to the description box. It's the first thing I have listed and you can get registered. You uh, it's more important to me uh, than anything at this for this particular class that if you want to join, you're able to. So it's pay what you can as low as a dollar. Um, if that's all you can afford, please don't feel you need to explain anything to anybody or me particularly. Um, that's why I did it. I want to include as many crafters as we can. So that's down there. All right, I'm going to look up in a second. But this is how I'm doing it. You see my um, the process? Okay. Mary, I think... I agree with you, and a lot of people wouldn't like that. It takes up the screen, but I think you're right. You can be able to choose it. I was wondering if I was doing it wrong and, like, I wasn't choosing it somewhere. Because, yeah, I, I agree. People should want to do that if they want to do that. All right. For those of you that also missed it, I'm going to Ikea in a little bit. I don't mean to make you jealous if you like Ikea. <laughs> be fun. Um, okay, so Susan, could there be a part two to the cl first class to then make a finished card with what we made from the first class? Oh, Susan, yeah. So I think I'm going to do another background class based on what you're saying because I do have a background class I did um, where we just brought our backgrounds and I gave you like, we had like 20, 
21, I think, different designs that, of ideas. Of course, there's limitless, limited, limitless amount. But I love that. I think that's a great idea. I'm going to try to plan another background class. Yes, based on that. <laughs> Instant jealousy. Okay. All right. So there we go. Now you can just see that level up, right? Am I alone in this? I just think it really adds something super fun and pretty and a delicate um, kind of look, but I still couldn't stop there. And I went with gold embellishments. All right. So any of you who might've been curious about my new embellishment, embellishment storage container, which I'm going to share. I know it's a lot of embellishments. Put your non, non judgy hat on. <laughs> so this is my container here. I don't want to tip it too much, but I have tried so many different ways to do my embellishments. And I find this one for me, because everyone is different, for me, I'm actually using them now. And here's why. It has five drawers, and I can take out the whole drawer, and I can just use this one. I use little spoons to spoon out stuff if I'm doing shakers. I just use my fingers if I just need a few. But And I have them categorized. So here, obviously, these are all clear or iridescent. These are more of like those clay ones, different kinds. Um, here are gems, different colors of gems. I know container of happiness, spot on. This is various. So I have some eyeballs, some snowflakes, beach, fall. So just kind of like those sequins type. And this is stars, stars down here. So this is, yeah, I mean, if I haven't noticed cross contamination too much, um, and I find that I'm using them, that was my problem. If when they were all in their own little tiny container, I don't know what it was about my brain. I was like, I don't want to go get that container. But now they're here off to the side and I'm using them. Okay. So there's that. Um, I don't know if I have, that's on Amazon, but I don't know if I have that. If you're interested in that, I will put it in the link. I might have it in there. I might've known I was going to show it to you. So I put it in there. Okay. Let me go back to my pearls. Let me pull this out. Now the devastating thing would be if I dropped this whole thing. But we don't want to put that kind of negativity out into the universe, do we? No. So let's put a background on this. We're going to do background meaning. Um, I'm going to, I have to be careful. Remember, this is wet. But I am going to put it on my card. No, nope, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to keep it flat. So I'm going to use the gold. I like these gold pearls. These are from Pink Fresh Studio. These are really, really pretty. Um, I've been using them a lot. So I have them in silver and gold. And I don't know if this is pink fresh, but they're sort of like iridescent. So uh, anyone else have a lot of Jenny, welcome. Anyone else have a lot of um, embellishments in their stash? And if you do, are you using them? That's not said with judgment. That's said with encouragement. <laughs> are you using them or are you collecting them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put, um, let's see, I'm trying to get all your comments too. So I'm just, all right, the rules of where you put stuff, wherever you think it goes. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's how we're playing by the rules today, wherever I want to. How about that? Do I sound a little bit rebellious there? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, put another one here. All right, so I just put my my group glue drops there, and then I'm using my picker tool, and I'm just going to add my little fun embellishments. And I think this adds another, not too much, but another piece to uh, the look of it. Now, again, Mary, be careful. This is wet. Turn over, little pink pearl. Done. There we go. Okay. I'm happy with it. I like it. I like it. It's over. It's done. What do y'all think? <sighs> okay. And how you remember where you got them from? I, I collect mine because I forget. Oh, Carla. I just, I can't mislead you. Carla, I know where like three of these come from. <laughs> I'm sorry if you thought otherwise. Uh, maybe five. I know those are from Pink Fresh. I got them from scrapbook.com. I know that my iridescent sequins are from Gina K from scrapbook.com. 
and that's probably it. Okay, yay! All right, so that is the card for today. Let me switch. Um, I will never not have a crafter math situation uh, where it looks like a complete bomb exploded on my desk. I think this is, you can't see it very much, but okay. Yes, you can rewatch Linda, um, but I'm happy. Oh, I was supposed to show you a sneak peek of the card for the upcoming embossing class. So this is just one of them. Oh, I was about to show you all a different one. We've got two sneak peeks. All right. So this is one of the cards we're going to make um, in class. I'm super excited about it. So there's the card. I hope you can join. Again, it's pay what you want. I just want people to join and feel in community and have fun, play with their embossing folders. And if you don't have or want embossing folders, you're still invited. You can come and craft along, see what embossing folders even are, um, and just watch and have fun with us. So either one, that is uh, you're welcome to. Okay, so I would love to sit here and chat with you all, but I have um, a husband who's waiting for me <laughs> to go, so I suppose I should stop talking. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm so, so excited that you made it. There is a replay if you want to, once this stops, you can go back and watch the replay. Um, Mary at MaryPolancoDesigns.com if you have any questions um, or if I didn't answer anything in here. So hit me up via email and I'll get back to you. And I hope to see you all in class or in the next video or wherever. So uh, we'll see you then. Everybody have a good Sunday. Have a great week ahead. And remember to do something for yourself.